I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Yeah, I apologize. I'm still with me when I get sick or I get a cough. It takes forever to get over it, so I do apologize. And also, if you if I herky jerky with this webcam, it's either I have exposure so you can actually see me, or frame rate so it goes a bit smoother. So I figure at least you can see more of my face, although it's not the smooth frame rate. With that said, this is another Patreon review. Thank you so much. This is from Bra at Stipe, and it's for Spencer Confidential, which I didn't know what the hell this was. And then I'm like, oh, this is a 2020 Netflix film. And it starts Mark Wahlberg, and it's directed by Peter Bird, which Peter Bird has directed Mark Wahlberg in Lone Survivor, Mile 22. I wish Peter Bird would stop fucking using Mark Wahlberg. There's so many other actors you can use. Aaron Eckhart, Thomas Jane. I mean, like, why do you always have to keep using Peter, uh, Peter Bird? Why do you have to keep using Mark Wahlberg? Marky Mark. And to be fair, Mark Wahlberg is not the worst thing of this film. Like, this is not a rant, but at the same time, there's really nothing that special about this film either. You know, when I got done watching this film, it was, I thought, a fairly forgettable, been there, done that, where nothing really made me mad, but at the same time, nothing really made an impression other than it has a pretty decent soundtrack. You know, the the songs used, you even have the, the Beast of America from The Collector, the movie The Collector, that song's in this. I'll go through like some of the other songs used in this, but again, not a bad soundtrack. Just like the very first time. That song's in there. But it just... Mark Wahlberg, he's an ex-cop. He's in prison because he went to one of his officers he found that it looked like he was beating his wife, so he beat the shit out of him. So he got five years while in prison. Post Malone, if you don't know who that is, look him up. Fairly familiar figure and people of today. Him and a group of people try to beat him up in prison. Mark Wahlberg beats the hell out of them. I swear Peter Bird has gone backwards with fighting because... He did a good job with the rundown. When you watch the fight scenes in the rundown, they're very well done. And how he utilized the you know the usage of slow motion and really oomph and the impact of people getting hit. And here that's not the case, but it's just kinda of like meh. 
in one ear out the other. It's not horrible fights, but it's just like meh fights. Anyway, he gets out of prison. He meets up with an old friend of his, played by Alan Alda. And he wants to go on to, I think, Arizona and drive semi-trucks and move on with his life. Uh, while there, he meets this guy, his roommate. Uh, his name is Hawk. And it's the actor from Black Panther. It's the actor who... Uh, what was his name? And The character in Black Panther was it M Kabi Mbaku, Winston Duke is the actor's name. He played Mbaku. He was, again, famous for a supporting role in Black Panther. I have nothing to say that actor, but I don't think him and Mark Wahlberg had anything chemistry-wise. Uh, maybe Winston Duke could have been the lead. Maybe that would have been more interesting. I don't know. Maybe if it was him and someone else. Like a Thomas Jane or an Aaron Eckhart or various other actors you use other than just Mark Wahlberg. But I don't know, just the two of them didn't really have much chemistry. And Winston Duke's character really wasn't that interesting of a character other than he wanted to be MMA. And Mark Wahlberg teaches him how to punch. I'm like, wait a minute. You're trying to tell me that Mark Wahlberg is going to teach a guy who the character is trying to go to MMA how to fucking punch? Marky Mark? Okay. The plot. The person he beat up before the officer, he beat up five years ago. He's been found dead. So other cops think maybe he did it. Also, this other guy died. And then it's made to assume that guy killed the other cop in a murder suicide pact. And Mark Wahlberg sees the widow and she's like, no, he would never do that. Something else is going on. So then he decides to get on the case. Now, when Mark Wahlberg's partner, played by Team Woodbine, came up. I can't even do it. I said, don't fucking tell me he's the bad guy. Don't fucking sit here and tell me that he's the bad guy. Because, oh, he is the former partner of the lead character. His Team Woodbine. And the last time I remember him was in the Total Recall remake, which he was also another traitor who was fucking over the lead. Wow, big surprise. Botine would buy the villain. How many times have we seen that? Where the former partner has been so many years and he happens to be. I'm like. I called it. I fucking called that Botine would buy was the bad guy. I wonder if this Botine would buy. I wonder if he's the bad guy. Just as a thought. I didn't even take you that serious. I'm like, oh, I wonder if he's the bad guy. And I'm like, he is? Holy shit. Like I said, once in a while you did a nice song, like uh, Mark Wahlberg fights these cops in the bathroom while the song Sweet Caroline, da, da, da. Which even then that was a bit confusing because these cops don't like him. These cops want anything and everything to take this ex cop and put him back in the jail, put him in his place. And then we go, well, wait a minute. He just fought you guys in a bathroom. If you really want him out of the way, you could easily go, wait a minute, you just got out of a jail. You're probably on parole or you're on, what okay, you got out of jail. We could charge you for assaulting us. Boom, you're back in jail, end of movie. So that makes me go, then why, if they don't like him so much that they want to, all five, six of them want to kick his ass in the bathroom, why don't they just charge him with assaulting a police officer? If they really want him out of the way. Because they surround him. Mark Wahlberg starts fighting him in the bathroom. So I'm like okay. These cops don't like him. Like I said. Why don't you just charge him with assault to a police officer again. Boom. But then there wouldn't be no movie. And we wouldn't have a fight scene in the bathroom. So there you go. Whatever. So then it goes from either him teaching Hawk, Winston Duke, how to fight. I'm like, <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's going to teach someone how to punch? Give me a fucking break. 
comedy. There's this ex-wife who definitely has the Boston accent going. I mean, going full force. And they're fucking in the bath in another bathroom to the song just like the very first time. Um, that's the you know the type of humor in the film. Or there's a point where Mark Wahlberg's chased by a dog and he can't get away from the dog. Which honestly, when Peter Berg is trying to go a little bit more to comedy, that seems more in his wheelhouse. Which is one of the many things why the rundown worked was when this action comedy mix, I thought mixed fairly well. And then with The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and Sean William Scott, I thought they worked great together. Lo and behold, to me, that's Peter Burr's best film that he's directed. Seems like a downhill ever since with Battleship and some of these other fucking films. Like Mile 22, everything I've seen about that seems like a huge piece of shit. And a waste of equal ways this time. You know, for the Raid Redemption. But anyway, getting back to this. The drama doesn't work the best. Point where Mark Wolver's talking to Winston Duke. And Winston Duke's like, oh, I don't know about this. And Mark Wolver literally says, you don't care about clearing his name, do you? The cop that died. I'm like, why the fuck should he? He doesn't know who the fucking guy is. He doesn't know who the cop is he's never met the fucking guy he's never met him for two seconds let alone two minutes two days or two years so you're like well you don't care about clearing his name do you that'd be like me i don't he doesn't know who the fuck the guy is he's never met the guy he's never met the widow he's never met the widow's kid he doesn't know anything about him it's a complete utter fucking stranger and this guy wasn't a former cop or a former this he's just a guy who's your roommate who wants to be a f mma fighter so and you're giving this fucking guilt complex of well you don't you don't care about clearing his name he doesn't know who the fuck the guy is so why should he care Mark Wahlberg you fucking feel it feel it asshole dumbass a few other action scenes he fights these guys in a restaurant Winston Dude backs his car up through the restaurant. You find out Bokey Wood binds the bad guy. That was fucking predictable. Uh, there's another point where a car is driving and Winston Dude's character throws something onto the car from off a bridge. Part of me wonders where is this going. It seems like the plot's meandering now and the action scenes are not that spectacular. I've seen Netflix movies where the action's pretty damn good. Extraction, that came out this year. That action was really good. Uh, Sits Underground. A lot of people didn't like it. I did. I thought it was a lot of fun. This just sort of forgettable affair. You get to the finale where between Woodbine, the bad guys have Alan Elda. Something to do with droid shipments. So then... Mark Wahlberg drives this semi. I think the semi is called Black Betty. I'm fucking surprised they didn't have that fucking song. Ooh, Black Betty. Blah, blah, blah. Ooh, Black Betty. Which I'm glad I didn't because that's one of those songs I'm fucking tired of hearing in movies. I'm just surprised since that's the name of the truck. And they've been having all these other songs in the movie. The ending just seems very tame compared to a lot of action films. He drives the semi in, crashes through some cars. I don't know why the bad guys are not shooting at him. Because it's a semi. It's not like a fucking Corvette. It's a, it's part of a semi driving towards them. They know that's not one of their own. So when it's driving towards them, why don't they go... Pa, 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 pa. No one does that. Instead, they just go, ah, and then run away. I'm like, why is no one shooting at this thing? Pa, 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 pa. But no. What, he do a sneak attack? He did a sneak attack on him in a fucking semi? And then he runs after Bokeem Woodbine. Winston Duke is Hawk. He punches a couple people, including slamming one to a wall. Then you get to 
Mark Wahlberg chases Bokeem Woodbine, and Mark Wahlberg does the thing where he has the gun on him, and then, you know, we're going to sell this like men, and then you end this whatever the fuck fight. Arrest Bokeem Woodbine. And then, uh, the two of them, and Alan Elda, and Mark Wahlberg's dog named Pearl, they go off, and the movie's over. That's what I mean. It's like, as I'm describing it, the, the Mark Warburg, to be fair, he's not the worst actor. I give him a lot of crap. He's not the worst actor. And there's been films I've enjoyed him in. The Big Hit. The Italian Job. Uh, Booty Nights. It's just... Sometimes I could deal with Mark Wahlberg... It's just he's not one of my favorites. He's not in that top 20, 30 of today's actors. And it's just like, okay, he's one of those actors I do think is overused a lot. He just used a lot. I'm like, oh, why? What about some of these actors that don't get utilized a lot? That get kind of tossed aside or underused or put into these supporting roles and he's like well why not that guy be the lead instead of Mark Wahlberg so it just but you know what he's not even the worst part of it the, the worst part of it is just that it's nothing special it's nothing unique it's nothing that will register a few days after the film is done maybe he's trying to bank on the two leads chemistry with each other which I don't think is that eclectic or that it's definitely no Nick Dolte, Eddie Murphy 48 hours hell it's no Gregory Hines Billy Crystal or Running Scared there's just nothing that remarkable with the with the chemistry with the two leads sometimes I feel like Winston Duke is barely in it I mean he is but just almost that feeling and like I said the action scenes are just kind of in one year out the other the villain I mean that was predictable the ending is I've seen more I've seen more what's the word I'm looking for it didn't seem like nothing much happened at the end I've seen TV shows where a lot more shit happened at the end of those episodes than this movie crashes into a couple cars, chases Bokeem Woodbine, has a whatever fight, and then Winston Duke fights a couple guys. Literally a couple, like three, four guys. That's it. That's it. And I go, I just see why this didn't go in the theaters. I just see why it would only go to Netflix. But even with Netflix, I've seen other films that do more bright. Bright with Will Smith and, and uh, was it Joe Edgerton? More happened in that movie during his action sequences. You know, even the finale where we're going to put a bomb in this guy and blow him up. and Anyway, Spencer Confidential. Even the title sounds, the title sounds like a shitty TV show. Spencer Confidential. Coming soon to CBS. So, uh, just... I guess it's kind of a rant. <laughs> and yeah, it's nothing that really made me mad, but I, I guess I guess it is kind of a rant. So I guess I will tell it rant. It's just nothing that made me that vitriolic. But I might as well put rant on the title because it's not a positive review. So there you go. Just nothing that special about it, really. Very forgettable film. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.